Code, an NGO that hopes to empower uh, girls and women through technology, has unveiled the winners of its annual hackathon. We chat to the NGO's chair, Zandi Lekebene, uh, about their work in the male-dominated technology industry. A very happy Friday to you, and thank you so much for joining us. Happy Friday to you, too. Let's start with the term coding. What are we yeah. talking about, essentially? Yeah, so, so I think... Um, a lot of people throw around these words, you know, technology words, uh, and at least so a lot of women that we target don't even know what it is. Mm. Um, so coding, it's, it's a language, right? It's a language that you use to build a website, to build mobile apps like Facebook, WhatsApp. So behind that, so it's a language called coding. And within that language, there's different types of you know, languages. Um, that you use like Python, and so you'll hear all these yeah. terms, and it, it just and it Python, not the snake, <laughs> not the snake. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll it'll get um, it gets quite deep. But what it is essentially, it's a language that you use to to create an app or a website in the simplest terms. Right. In terms of that space and women participation, what does it look like? Yeah. So I think this is global stats, right? Um, women are very much underrepresented. Um, when you look into South Africa and the technology companies here as well women you know represent less than 26 percent of the tech um, space so and that's why we've taken it upon us to say we need more females in mm. this you know mm. we need women to be in these rooms creating these apps mm. so that our perspective you know is part of it and the way we see the world is part of the solutions that come out right yeah and the fourth industrial revolution is tech heavy are we seeing collaborations on the continent as well especially amongst women yeah, so I, I think that's a very interesting point that you raise. Um, there's a lot of different NGOs and government and private sector that are doing things in silos, um, which is a huge problem because the needle is not shifting. Mm. Yes, everybody's doing their little parts, but the bigger picture is nothing is happening. So um, for us in particular, we like to collaborate with other NGOs that are in the space because that's the only way we'll really like make an impact by putting together our resources and making sure that we reach out to as many young girls and women across the continent. I mean, this is not just about South Africa. You know, it's the continent in its entirety. What do we put that absence of participation in terms of authorities uh, down to? Yeah, so I think, you know, government is slow to move. Um, that's the reality. So even what's being taught in universities and colleges, it's outdated. You know, technology moves so fast. This year, you know, Python is the in thing, next year it's mm. Java, so it moves so fast. We need to be able to keep up, and for us to be able to do that, we need government to be able to keep up. Mm. So government needs to put in place policies and, you know, environments and infrastructure that allows us to keep up with the global market. Mm. And unfortunately, that hasn't been happening as rapidly as it should, um, which hinders our progress. Does yeah. that mean it's going to take us decades to have our very own Silicon Valley here Oof. in Africa? It's, it's going to take a while. Um, from my perspective, I, I don't think it's something that will happen, you know, in the near future. I think, though, that now people are starting to realize that partnerships are important. We're talking to government as well, and we're talking to private sector, because we realized alone we, we can't mm. we can't do much. But mm. if we start working together, and everybody starts realizing that this this is the next industrial revolution, um, everyone needs to participate. Everyone needs to be upskilled to be able to get jobs. You know. We've talked about AIs coming, robots taking over our jobs. It's not even coming, it's here. It's here. We're if living in the future. If you go to McDonald's now, there's some McDonald's where there's no longer cashiers. You, you just go um, order your, your meal and, and it comes. Mm. That's, that's AI. People mm. think AI and they think like the Terminator. <laughs> you know, something that far-fetched. But it's already here, which mm. means that those people that are being displaced need to be upskilled to be able to participate in the job market you know, that relates to technology. Let's talk to little girls, young yeah. girls who are always on apps, um, who love apps. It's very yeah. possible that you can create your own app. How right. do you do that? Where do you go? How do you yeah. empower yourself to do that? Yeah, so that's, um, and that's one of the things I particularly am passionate about in our NGO call code, um, is young girls, getting them started from a young age because now everybody has a tablet or a mm. smartphone. Um, but then it's how you use it. Like, what do you, what do you put, what apps do you put on that um, tablet so that the girl is learning and not just playing? Mm -hmm. So, um, in fact, two days, two days ago, um, on Tuesday, we partnered with CETA, the South African State um, Information Technology Agency, where we went to a school and we took 30 young girls mm -hmm. and we taught, we taught them what we call Scratch. 
Scratch is a very basic um, program that allows young kids, both girls and boys, to start learning about code. Mm. So it's very visual. You're building games. You're not even realizing you're learning what coding is, you know, the logic, because it's, it's very simple, but it's such a mind geared up to being a coder. Mm. So that is what I advise parents to do. Um, get Scratch on your kids' phones because it's... Scratch is an app. It's an app, okay. yeah. So it's, it's, it's creating games. So in the simplest term, they've already done the backend coding, but mm. Kids can start creating their own games and start thinking about logic. And then once they get really into it, then they can advance. Mm. So, and for me, like, you know, seeing those young girls, when they got into the room at first, I asked them, do you guys know what coding is? And they're like, no, they've never heard what it is. Um, they're from a school, public school in Mamelodi. And once you got into it, just mm. the excitement and, you know, mm. they really got, mm. and it, it's because of the way it's designed mm. for kids to really, like, engage. Mm. Mm. They got so excited, they built stuff, and I was like, there you go, guys. Access is everything. Access hey. is so important. Mm. Opportunities for young girls are so important. Right. You're a self-taught coder, yeah. um, and that, I guess, speaks to the fact that you don't have to be uh, a scientist to actually code. Yeah, no, I think um, you just need to love learning. That's, that's, that's the value I'd love to instill in young kids. Mm. Love learning, because right. you're never going to stop learning. Right. Um, you know, Technology, like I said, is moving so fast mm. that you can't say today I've learned this, I'm done. Mm. Now I'm a you, you continuously have to learn, which is what I did. I wanted to be in the space, mm -hmm. so I started learning. And every day there's new um, technology coming out, and I just keep teaching myself right. because I want to be relevant in the space. And that's, that's the mentality you have to yeah. have. It's about what you want and going yeah. after it. Thank you very much, uh, Sandy Le for coming through uh, this morning. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and your weekend. Thank you. Um, and that was Zandile giving a, a chairperson of Girl Code talking all things uh, coding.